Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. I'd like to point out that the meeting, as of now, is not being recorded live. There are some uh, technical problems, so to speak. Uh, if those are corrected, then we'll go on live. We'll announce to the committee. But it is being taped, recorded, so it will be shown at a subsequent day. Okay. Being before we start our meeting, we always ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Of all the attitudes we can acquire, surely the attitude of gratitude is the most important and by far the most life-changing. Thank you very much. Call the 10th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Pianus? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Longham? Here. 16 present. Quorum is present. This time, Alderman Cleonis, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Alderman Cleonis. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Resignation. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a letter dated August 11th to the mayor from Harold Beeble advising that the, regretfully he's resigning his position on the Sheboygan Park and Forestry Commission due to uh, his wife's ill health. And uh, need a motion to accept and file? So move, Mayor. Second. Second. Motion made and second under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Uh, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Special Committee on Handheld Mobile Telephone Use. Alderman Mark Hanna, Alderman Marilyn Montemayor, Deputy Chief Alan Shervin, Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams, and Lisa Gennaro. Uh, <clears throat> all terms expiring 10-9-08, signed by the Mayor. And these appointments lie over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next we go to the public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, first on the list will be Tom Gessler. Is Mr. Gessler here? Mr. Gessler, could you get the mic up kind of close to you that it'll work better? That'd be great. And I need your home address, please, sir. 1711 South 12th Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to address the council tonight. As you all know, there's quite a bit of uh, crime going on in this community. Okay, I uh, had a couple issues uh, in the last year here where I had vandalism and the sort, that sort of stuff happening at my residence and in our neighborhood. It's my understanding we're very short-handed on the police department, okay? No reason for that. The only reason I can see is naturally we're trying to keep taxes down. I agree with that 100%. However, I asked the council and the mayor that we get more officers patrolling, especially in certain areas. We're having a lot of crime going on. I was a victim of crime probably $1,500 in the last year. Uh, we're having everything go on in our neighborhood. So I ask that the council and the mayor consider hiring more officers. Older people in my neighborhood won't even walk at night anymore. A lady came over today, she said, I'm afraid to walk after dark. I go for a walk in the evening. I'm lucky if I see an officer between Union Avenue and Broadway Avenue. It's time, folks. As a council, I'm asking, and as the mayor, I'm asking that we somehow come up with some money. I know it's hard to do, but come up with some money to take care of this. This is public safety and it must be addressed now. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> Thank you very much.
this time I'm gonna make some comments regarding a water safety initiative and uh, talk a little bit, just a brief explanation of the Give Yourself Five program that has been uh, put in place just recently, August 15th is when it started. Uh, I've had some inquiries about it. I wanted to uh, explain a little bit about it. Uh, there has been a show that has been on, on Channel 8 uh, regarding this particular uh, Give Yourself Five program, uh, and it's helped quite a bit. But first, I'd like to uh, talk about the, uh, the, the tragic uh, accident that happened not, not long ago last week and the near drownings that, drownings that we have had. Uh, the lake is a, is a beautiful lake and very, uh, very alluring at times, and it, uh, it, it can be treacherous and, uh, and, and, and deadly at times. Uh, what I've done is, 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 is taken the concerns of, of many citizens that have, have expressed concern as to what is it that we can do better or what is it that we can do new to, to prevent the, uh, the, the tragic loss of census lives and uh, traumatic uh, near drownings that have occurred also. I would also like to extend my deepest sympathies, and I know that you would like to extend your deepest sympathies to the family of John Duong, John Duong, to the family of John Duong, who, uh, who was, whose body was recovered. Uh, and my deepest sympathy goes to them, and I, I believe yours too, to uh, their friends, relatives, uh, and neighbors, our deepest sympathy also. It's also important to look back and, and, and see who was involved in, 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 in these incidents. We have several citizens that were involved, some of which were heroes. They actually saved lives. Um, unfortunately, no one could save John. But there were a lot of people that were involved in the, in the, uh, the search and recovery effort. And those people merit being mentioned, and we express our, our Heartfelt thanks to everyone who played a role. We had the uh, chief, under Chief uh, Kirk, the police department, did an excellent job with the with the uh, search and recovery effort. Under Chief Jay Lastusky, the fire department and the ambulance did a, a remarkable job out there. Under Sheriff Mike Helmke, the Sheboygan County uh, deputies did a great job in assisting us. Also, under. Uh, Marcus Evans, uh, Chief Marcus Evans, the Coast Guard, spent numerous hours out there helping. We also had the uh, Chief Douglas Holton from the Milwaukee Fire Department that assisted. Sheriff Mylon Fink from Fond du Lac Sheriff's Department that assisted. We had Bob and Julie Kramer from the Great Lakes Search and Seizure that, that assisted. We had the Salvation Army who assisted and provided food and, and support. Uh, the Pizza Hut also, and Piggly Wiggly. Uh, from Pizza Hut, Ellis Klinger, and Piggly Wiggly, Mike Tellier. This to me, and I believe uh, people have recognized it as being one of the, the, the greatest examples of intergovernmental cooperation and uh, citizen cooperation and, and, and a very important effort that needed to be undertaken. Uh, it's, it's strikingly amazing that all these people were able to come together put a plan in place and move forward and, and accomplish what they set out to accomplish and get their job done. It's just remarkable how they were able to do that. In response to this incident and in response to, to my assessment that perhaps we have been lacking at the lakefront and perhaps our other swimming areas, I have put together a, a water safety initiative that I would like to introduce to, to the community. And part of that initiative uh, uh, it's, it's in response to this, as I said, but it's going to involve um, five things. The first that it will involve is a water safety task force that I will put together. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get the certain people uh, to be part of the task force. I'm looking at, uh, the, of course, the mayor, chief of police, fire chief, coast guard chief, a uh, member of the recreation department, an alderman, a citizen, and then we can do with it, uh, we can change more if we need to. The Coast Guard, Chief Marcus Evans, have been, has been a, a great asset to this community and uh, to, 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 to the city. The charge, if, if we think about it, we're gonna have a water safety task force. What, what, what exactly are they going to do? We're, I'm hoping that they can study and take strong 
deliberate action towards reducing, if not eliminated, the senseless loss of lives and the near drowning of our citizens and our visitors. As quickly as possible, I'm hoping that we can put a, a, a water safety program. That'll be the other part of it. And that program will include at a minimum uh, an appropriate, this appropriate and necessary postings, the strategic placement of, of life rings, emergency call boxes, and a collaborative educational component that will involve the city, the fire department, police department, the rec department, and other entities that have since, I believe, called uh, Chief Lastowski that they would like to be a part of this, this initiative. Uh, it's going to take a community to address the, the concerns that we have. And I am just delighted that uh, there's a lot of people that want to be a part of this. There will be other considerations that will be made, uh, lifeguards, one of the, uh, the thought that has come up is that lifeguards were eliminated approximately 20 years ago due to budgetary constraints. I uh, appeal to you that life has no price. It just doesn't. We're looking, we would be hopefully looking at uh, designated swimming areas, installation of protective railings, a possible flag system that like they have in other areas where depending on what the water is like, what the rip currents are like, certain color flags are posted and that alerts the, the people at the beach or anywhere else that that's the condition of the lake at the moment. And those have been proven to be very instrumental and, and worthwhile. And then I would ask the citizens to, uh, to help. If you have any ideas as to what we could do better or new to prevent the loss of life or near drownings, to please uh, call us, talk to your alderman, call my office, and uh, give us your ideas. And then the last thing that, it, that this water safety initiative is going to involve is a uh, request from the capital improvements program of seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollars to be uh, to be used for the implementation of the water safety program. I think that the amount is minimal considering what we have uh, in our traditionally have had in our water uh, in our capital improvements program. It's very worthwhile money. That request will come to you sometime this year. I, I would hope that you would uh, pass it and assist me in putting together this water safety initiative. Next, I would like to speak to, uh, to you about the Give Yourself Five program. I have to start off by saying, no, we're not having this uh, Give Yourself Five safety program because the city needs money, okay? That's not the reason for it. I've been told that and people are telling everybody that. It's not because the city needs money. In fact, to enforce our laws, we don't need a Give Yourself Five because the laws are enforced. But Officer Preby came up with this idea and it's a great idea, is to give, this gives people ample time and notice that the police department is going to be taking our, 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 our code, our ordinance is pretty serious and people are going to be held accountable if, if they're violating the, the city ordinances. So the Give Yourself Five, is, it's a safety program. It's an attempt to reduce accidents at some of the busiest intersections. And I, I, I ask you, next time you're driving around, well, I shouldn't ask you because all of you drive 25 in a 25 mile zone, right? But if, if you're driving 35 in a 25 mile zone, try driving 25 and then ask yourself, could I stop if somebody ran in front of me? You could, because I tried it. And it feels incredibly snow, but it's incredibly safe also. And that's the whole point behind the Give Yourself Five uh, program is to uh, encourage and, and, and give an awareness to the community about the safety of, of following the law. And with that, we'll move on. The consent agenda, President Hanna, items 10 to 1 to 10 16. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I make a motion that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call a roll. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1017 through 1022 to be referred. 
Report of Officers 2, uh, 1023. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion that all ROs be accepted nope. and placed on file for 1023. Okay. Need and, a motion? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, make a motion to, for, file. to file. To file. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep. I'm sorry, that, that was the wrong one. It's yes. 1024. 1024. Is my, yes. my fault. I apologize for that. 1023, we're holding until 1039. 1024, we can. Thank you. I'd make a motion on 1024 to file. You were correct. No, my apologies. Second. There's a motion and second to file 1024. Any discussion? Alderman Bourne. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, the city attorney did, a, uh, did a, an opinion on this. This hap happened, uh, this was brought up at the last meeting. Uh, one of the older persons questioned whether I should be making motions at the Law and Licensing Committee meeting as chairman of that committee. And uh, while I don't make it a habit to make motions, where I ask my committee members to make motions, the occasion uh, occasionally arises where I do make a motion. And uh, the city attorney did a uh, legal opinion on this. And according to Robert's rules of order, if I can... Uh, bring to your attention the second last paragraph on the document. It says, thus a committee chairperson has the right under the council's duty adopted rules of procedure to make motions during meetings of committees which he or she chairs. Note that this does not mean that the chair must or should make motions, but only that the chair has the right under the rules to make motions as any other, as other committee members. So I just wanted to uh, uh, make that clarification, and I thank uh, the city attorney for doing the opinion. Thank you. There is no more discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1025 lies over to September 15th. 1026 through 1030 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 1031, I will refer back to uh, the Salary and Grievance Grievances Committee. 1032 through 1034 lies over. 1035 through 1036. Oh, I'm sorry, Alan Bourne. Uh, thank you, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, going back to 1031. Uh, I was wondering, uh, and I have no problem with referring that back to salary and grievance. I think it's a good idea. But I, I'm one, I would like to ask uh, Chair, Chairman Mont, Chairperson Montemayor and her committee uh, of how we're going to be uh, dealing with merit pay increases for the non-reps, how they're going to be dealt with, especially people at the top of the salary range. If, if as part of this going back to the committee, if they could investigate that and give us a report back when this document comes sure. back. Sure, we can have, we can, uh, Alderman Montemayor has made note of that, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And 10, 34, 35, and 36 to be referred. Report of Committee 6 by 1037 by Finance, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners, requested up to $20,000 for independent counsel and for proper training, and recommending striking the $20,000 request and to approve $590 for PFC training. Uh, Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that the document, uh, the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and, is there a second? Second, under discussion. There is none. Please, uh, all in favor say aye. Oh. oh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 1038 to be referred. Report of committee seven. Uh, there's notice to rescind. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to rescind the 30-day suspension of alcohol beverage license number 2228 held by Kevin Blondie's Blue Phoenix LLC Kevin S. Nye, Kevin S. Nyheis agent, and the 30-day consecutive, I'm sorry, the 30-day the consecutive day suspension of beverage operator's license number 6196 held by Kevin S. Nyheis, which uh, were imposed by the council at the July 21st, 2008 meeting. 
Is there a second to that motion? Oh, there's a second? Okay. Motion and under discussion now. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, I would like to make a motion to hold document 1023 and that document number 1039 until the council meeting on uh, September 2nd. Okay. The reason for that is uh, we just received information tonight on our desks from Attorney Kautzer, who represents Mr. Nyheis, and I think in fairness to Attorney Kautzer and his client that the council be given the two-week period to read over these documents and make a more informed decision on September 2nd. Okay. What we'll do though is act on the motion to rescind right. and then we'll, we'll I'll ask you to make a motion to hold those, okay? So on the motion to rescind, any discussion on that? If there isn't, please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Hassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Council election that, that date has been rescinded. Alderman Boren, uh, Vice President Boren on uh, 1039 and 23. Uh, thank you, Runner. On document number 1023 and 1039, I make a motion to hold that until the September 2nd meeting. Second. Motion and second to hold. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1040 by salaries and grievances at the at its meeting of August 7th met and discussed a possible across the board increase under the non-represented pay plan for 2008 and makes no recommendation as to the across the board increase under the non-rep pay plan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the report of committee. Motion and second to accept and, and adopt the report of committees. Thank you. Under discussion. There is none. Please call. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> and Decker? Aye. 16 hours. Motion carries. Report of committees 8, 1041 by finance, recommending authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the tenant lease agreement for the second floor of the building at 807 Center Avenue. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. And the resolution be put upon. And the resolution, pardon me, be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Vice President Boren. <sighs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was wondering if I could get a clarification from Attorney McLean. I noticed this document here is for lease of the second floor, and there was another document that came through today that's being referred, I believe, to finance, where we want to do a lease for the first floor of that building. What is that space on the first floor going to be used for if we agree to, if we can get a lease for it? Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it's my understanding part of the first floor would be leased for the tourism division oh. of planning. Uh, the Department of Revenue is moving out, I believe, at the end of September from the, uh, the, w the west side of the first floor, and that space would be available. So that'll make better visibility then for the tour sure. division, right? The first floor, better access. Ex ex better access and visibility, and uh, I think Paulette could, could use the space up there too, so. Thank you. Very good. Uh, so we had a, uh, did Colville? Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Hiddleston? Aye. Kleinis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauer? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1042, and 1043 lies over. 1044 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 959, resolution number 850809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Born, Bauk, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, established revenue and appropriations for renovation of existing boat ramps, donation for dive team supplies, appropriation for sick leave and vacation severance. Alderman Gisha. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Pionis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfeich. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Sir. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Longman. Aye. Warren. Aye. Bow. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 969 RC number 190809 by salaries and grievances recommending changing the job description and the minimum job qualifications for all newly hired mechanics. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the RC and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? No. Yes. Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? No. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Mongaman? No. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 12 ayes, 4 no. Motion carries. Nine. 71 RC number 1920809 by salary and grievances recommending amending the municipal code relating to residency so as to provide for a one time 90 day extension. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RC and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion to accept and adopt and put the ordinance upon its passage. Under, is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we certainly should accept and, and file the RC, but I personally voted no on the ordinance, and I would hope many aldermen would join me in voting no on the ordinance. Thank you. Uh, next we have Alderman Longerman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's my opinion this entire thing is a moot question, because if you read the municipal code. The municipal code, and I'll read it for you, all appointed department heads and members of boards or commissions shall be residents of the city and maintain residency in the city while under the employment or service of the city. Appointed department heads shall be residents of the city within six months of the date of their hiring. For the purpose of this section, the term appointed head shall be defined to mean those department heads appointed by the mayor with approval of the common council, as well as the police chief and the fire chief appointed by the police and fire commission in the event that any such department head and member of a board or commission does not meet the foregoing requirements, his office or position shall be automatically vacated. Forthwith vacated and such vacancy shall be filled in the manner prescribed by law. If you look at the word automatic in the dictionary, it says it's a function that takes place without any human input. The word automatically is the key word in my opinion. And if you take this ordinance verbatim, Mr. Lee's employment with this city was terminated on June 21st. And he was not then an employee and has not been an employee since that period of time. This is a ordinance that for some reason has been shoved aside, ignored. If we go to the Wisconsin League of Municipalities manual that are handed to each one of us, on page 44, about halfway down the page, under statutory officers, the office of the mayor they're speaking of here, as chief executive of the city, the mayor has a statutory duty, and I underline statutory duty because this is not an option. A statutory duty is something that you must do. He has a statutory duty to take care that city ordinances and state laws are observed and enforced and that all city officers and employees discharge their duties. And this is reference state statute 62.09 subsection 8 subsection A of the statutes of the state of Wisconsin. So your duty in this matter is quite clear. And why Mr. Lee has been in our employment since that time, I have no idea. There is absolutely nothing in this old ordinance that gives the city of Sheboygan any right to grant stays or extensions. 
And I'll repeat that again. His office or position shall be automatically forthwith vacated. And it is my contention that Mr. Lee is not an employee of the city, and so this entire process is moot. Next we have on the clerk. Uh, thank you. I actually, um, I might have to wait. I want to add some language uh, to the document, but I think uh, Alderman Montemayor has a motion. The uh, reporter committees are not to be amended. If you'd like, you can send it back. We can send it back. That's in the rules. Reporter committees are not amended in the council floor. Hmm? I'm sorry, what? And the oh, you're, you're looking to amend the, the ordinance? Right. Okay. okay. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, I want to have a motion to add the uh, following language after the word hardship. And it would so read after, after the word hardship that it will, be further, it will be further be the common council's discretion after the extension to determine full compliance with the residency requirement, including family members living in the city of Sheboygan, and make a final determination of the employment status of a department head or member of board or commission. Second. There's an, um, you made a motion to amend it accordingly. Yes. Yes. On, on discussion, on the amendment only, I have two more lights. Do those lights want to talk about the amendment? No? Okay, I'm going to shut them off. Alderman Montemayor, not the amendment? Yeah. Okay, okay. We've got Alderman Wagaman on the amendment? No? Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm going to turn everything off. Let's start over again. Okay, who wants to go first? Paul Magisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to, uh, uh, maybe a question for the city attorney. I didn't think we could legislate family members, like spouses and things like that, to say they have to live as well. You know, a person could be separated, the wife could be living in Toledo, yet the other, the husband here, or vice versa, could be living in Sheboygan. I think that language offered something having to do with family being here. I'm not so sure we can regulate that. If, you know, if, 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 if my son lives in New Jersey, am I out of compliance? Can you clarify that for us so we don't maybe dip into something that statutorily we can't? Um, sure. I, I do think that uh, location of spouses and other family members is relevant to the issue of whether someone is a resident of the community. But uh, I'd be concerned also that uh, our residency requirement would be uh, then uh, stretched out to include required that certain family members have to reside in the city in order for that employee to be considered a resident. I, I certainly, as I indicated, uh, location of family members is one of the factors that you consider in residency, but I wouldn't make that a determining criteria as to whether or not a particular department head is a city resident or not. Okay. On the amendment only, all in my law. Thank you, Your Honor. I wanted to be sure I have the amendment straight. Further, the Common Council can decide on, on, on if there's any more extenuating circumstances after this ordinance goes into effect. Is that what Alderman Surik was saying? I believe that's what he said. And here again, we have a situation where it should be the Salary and Grievances Committee instead of being, instead of circumventing the Salary and Grievance Committee. Alderman Wagaman, Alderman Gisha, are you done talking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alderman Wagaman, your light's blinking next. That was not on the amendment, sir. Okay. And we have Alderman Tark on the amendment. Thank you, Mayor. If, if that becomes an issue, I would I made uh, in a motion that instead of saying the word family members, family or dependents. If that would suffice legally. <clears throat> I would still have the same concern, Alderman Surik. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certainly the council can adopt anything you feel is appropriate, but uh, tying an employee's residence to a family members or dependents uh, or any other particular criteria that they have to have, you know, a uh, driver's license showing their address in Sheboygan, say, for instance. Uh, I, I would have concerns with that as to the enforceability of provisions that relate to extraneous things. 
Uh, again, I think that may relate to whether or not the department head is a resident or not, but I don't believe it's in the best interest of the city that you make that part of the residency requirement that dependents reside in the city. Moving along then to Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh, this, is on, this is on the motion, by the way. I attended. Uh, we, need, we need to talk on the amendment, though, because that otherwise. Okay. The okay. okay. This amendment, this language was voted on at the salary and grievance committee that I attended that dealt with this issue, and mysteriously it did not show up in the committee minutes. So maybe Alderman Montemayor, and this was, this, was voted, this was voted to be passed by Alderman Surik, Alderman Verhasselt, and Alderman Decker. Decker, almost the identical language. It was passed in salary and grievance, but for some reason it didn't show up in the minutes of the committee. So I would like the chairman or the vice chairman of salary and grievance to explain if you voted on it and you passed it, why wasn't it in the minutes? Alderman Montemayor, would you like to respond to that? Thank you, Your Honor. We did vote on it. It was voted on, and it was three to two, me voting against it, and it didn't make it to this, uh, to the agenda tonight, and that I don't know why, because yes, that is what we voted on at salary and grievance. Exactly what Alderman Surik said, that it had to do with the family living in Sheboygan also. That was voted on in salary and grievance. It passed three to two, me voting against it, of course, but it did not show up when we got our agenda on Friday. Alderman Rainfleisch, on the amendment. Uh, thank you. Um, that previous conversation confuses the issue a little bit more. Uh, so a few questions then regarding that. If that was the vote, uh, including that language, I guess, attorney, would that not actually be what should be in front of us? And if it's not in front of us, do, can we actually act on this resolution as written? I, I guess it would be my opinion that you have the document in front of you, that that's what's on the agenda. Okay. If there was some uh, procedural problem with uh, this document not reflecting the minutes, I think the appropriate thing to do is what was done, a, a motion to amend the proposed ordinance to reflect the language that didn't get in as a result go. of the... Well, I guess I would ask the council then, uh, while it was a close vote, three to two in that committee, uh, to um, perhaps approve the language uh, as amended um, this time around. Uh, then we can vote on the, the entire um, general ordinance after it's been amended. I do have some concerns about the, the, the uh, language too. I think um, if the intent is to stop being an automatic, because the language here is uh, the same language that Alderman Wagman had used, uh, that it's automatically forthwith vacated unless uh, council authorizes a one-time 90-day extension of said requirement for individual upon showing of hardship. Um, it seems to me that the language that we're looking at adding is simply saying then, okay, if, if the person comes back and says, I'm now a resident, there needs to be some sort of proof and some, somebody that looks at the proof and says, yes, you are a resident or no, you're not a resident at that point in time. If that's the intent of the language, I would fully support that. Um, if the intent is simply to decide which family members must live here to establish residency, I think that's a slippery slope. I wouldn't want to go down that way. So I, I, I guess I would ask for those three that voted for it, uh, what was their intent uh, in voting for that language uh, so further clarify for the rest of the body what we're looking at. Next we have Alderman, Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, when uh, earlier this, and this is on the motion, earlier this year when uh, Chief Lestusky asked me to work on a residency requirement for the new, newly hired paramedics, I worked with, uh, with uh, Chief Lestusky and Attorney McLean. The residency policy that was passed by the council a few weeks ago or a month ago, whenever it was, one of the bullet points in there was that uh, one of the tests for residency was that the spouse had to live in the city. And it's my understanding, Attorney McLean, from our discussions back then, that you modeled this after the residency requirement in the city of Milwaukee. And it was my understanding that if this didn't meet Supreme Court challenges, at least appellate courts, and that's why you put in the guidelines that you did in our residency requirement, which included the spouse living 
in the city of Sheboygan, the spouse of the city employee. Now, you know, we can play games with this all we want to, but if, if a department head is married, the spouse, according to the, the Milwaukee City Residency Rule, and apparently has passed court tests, if they're married, their spouse has to live in the city of Sheboygan. It's that simple, it's not complicated. In my opinion, it's not complicated. If they're married, their spouse has to live in the city of Sheboygan for them to be considered a resident of Sheboygan. The, the trick that was pulled in Milwaukee all the time, for example, uh, with, for example, with police officers or firefighters, they would rent a flop house apartment in the city of Milwaukee, move in some bare minimum furniture, and were living there a couple of days a week, but the majority of the time was spent out in the suburbs with their family. And that is nothing more, and as far as I'm concerned, a city department head having an apartment without their spouse, if they're married, living in the city is nothing more than a facade to get around the residency uh, requirement. Thank you. Holman Balk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we, we talked about this issue, I think, at the, April, no, the, the May uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. We had a very good discussion, very informative discussion. As I recall, we talked about how there were seven or 11 tests. Attorney McLean, you recall, there were a set of 13 tests. And so given that those tests have been defended in courts and are wi widely recognized throughout the state of Wisconsin, I think this is all kind of moot because given those 13 tests, salary and grievance already has everything they need. They don't need further wording. So uh, just uh, on the amendment itself, and I, I support what Alderman Warren is trying to accomplish here, I just don't think this wording does us any good or, or harm because it's already established there are these 13 tests and the salary and grievance uh, committee has the authority to look at those 13 and vote and decide either in compliance or out of compliance. Is that, uh, do I misunderstand that, Attorney McClain? Well, I think the, the distinction here is uh, a, a mandate that, that uh, is a condition of residency that your spouse has to live here to be, for the employee to be considered a resident versus guidelines. The, the courts have, have consistently looked at the various factors, those 11 or 13 or seven different factors as criteria to not any one of which is necessarily determinative, but are all looked at collectively to determine whether or not an individual is a resident. A big factor is where does the spouse reside? Where do the children reside? Where do they go to school? What's their driver's license say? Where do they vote? Uh, where's their income tax file? You know, there's a whole number of criteria, but none of which is in and of itself per se residency. So a follow-up, Mr. Mayor? Thank you. So is it reasonable to say that if there were someone, uh, a future named department head, that were trying to skirt the rules, wouldn't it be within the judgment of those five members of the salary and grievance to weigh those 13 guidelines and say, we're all going to stand up and be counted, and we're either in or we're out, yay, yay or nay, uh, they are in compliance or not. And then that goes before this body of 16 people who will vote to either support or not support that. So again, all that language is, is moot because the 13 guidelines are there, and five sober alder persons can debate that issue and then bring it to 16 alder persons and we can vote on it, right? So we don't need any of this. Is that fair? Well, that's my opinion, yes. Uh, uh, and even those 13 guidelines are just that. It, they're, they're not exclusive. You can come up with other things, but you look at the totality right. of the circumstances to make a determination. You don't look at one factor and say you either are or not a resident because you know, your, your daughter lives in the city with you or doesn't. Right, so one more comment, Mr. Mayor. So I guess I, I would vote not to approve this amendment because I, I don't think that it's necessary given that five five of our peers are gonna tackle this issue and it would be kinda of hard to hoodwink five people. I think uh, it would be kinda of hard to pull shenanigans about where you're gonna live and where your kids are gonna to go to school just to skirt a few thousand dollars in taxes uh, when five of us can see through that and then vote appropriately. So I, I will not vote to support this, not because I don't support what Alderman Bourne and, and the rest are trying to accomplish, I just don't think it's necessary. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, two times per issue, I'm going to let this one go by, but it's the fourth time, all of us are. Thank you, Mayor. I think the, the intent, well, the original question was what was the intent of salary agreements when we talked about this and voted on it? And it was, was basically, and it's kind of rhetoric, but basically that, that the department had particularly 
brings their family to the city of Sheboygan. That they don't, they're not Monday through Friday residents and go home and their children attend school in some other city or, or township. And uh, the intent at that time was that the person, because the air department had reside in the city, pay taxes in the city, and are, are, are basically uh, considered Sheboygan to be their home. Um, that's about all I have to say in that. Thank you. All on the road, one more time, too. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Attorney McLean. I just want to say again what you said. That criteria was something that may be considered. That's what the criteria was. Not an absolute. These are the things that may be considered to determine residency. Alderman Gishel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a point that I found it kind of curious that the same rules we're applying here on residency doesn't apply to any of us in this room. My spouse doesn't have to live in the city of Sheboygan. My kids don't have to go to school in the city of Sheboygan. My dog doesn't have to go down to the lakefront on a leash in the city of Sheboygan. All it says is I've got to live in the city of Sheboygan. Now my wife does happen to live in the city of Sheboygan. But we have open enrollment in the schools. They could go to school in Sheboygan Falls. Um, so it's, it's an interesting, and this is one of the issues with residency. This is why it's a problem. Because these rules are weird. And I just don't like applying rules to somebody else that I don't have to follow myself. So if we're all going to sit here in this room and talk about I've got to do this, I've got to do this, it's not the same rules we live by, and we're elected officials in the city of Sheboygan. I just think it's unfair. Okay. Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. It's a question for City Attorney McLean. Uh, just as a member of Salary and Grievance, I'm curious, what is the magic number? And I'm just, I, know, I realize it's just your opinion, but when you say one of those 13 factors cannot be a, a single determinant, are we talking like three, four, five, six of them before the committee could take action in the future? Again, just looking for some direction going forward. The, uh, the cases say you look at each case on a case-by-case -case scenario. You can't say that they're, you know, if you meet these criteria, you're a resident. Uh, if you meet these criteria, you're not a resident. So you've got to look at the totality, totality of the circumstances in each case and look at the various factors that uh, uh, go into being a resident and weigh the, the balance. Is this person a resident of the city? That, and so I can't give you a, a specific number because there really isn't one. Vice President Bourne, one more time. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, can I try to make a further amendment to the amendment, or do we have to vote on the original amendment on first? Amend. We need to vote on this one. We have to vote on yes. that? Okay, then I would like to make a further amendment after that. Okay. One amendment only, as read, would you please read it? Um, sure. The amendment says, it will further be at the Common Council's discretion after the extension to determine full compliance of the residency requirement, including family members living in the city of Sheboygan, and make a final determination of the employment status of a department head or a member of a board or commission. Please call the roll. Uh, Clarence. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. No. Excuse me. No. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. No. Boren. Aye. Bauk. No. Decker? Aye. Hisha? No. Hannah? No. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? No. Six eyes, ten no's. Motion fails on the amendment. Vice President Bourne, you said? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to make a motion, and the motion is going to read as follows. It will be the Common Council's discretion after the extension to make a final determination of the employment status of the department head or member of a border commission. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Any discussion? Vice President Moore? Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, it's obvious what I did here is I took out all of the controversial language as far as determining the, the council determining the full compliance of the residency requirement, but I feel it's important to have the council 
uh, because this is an ordinance change, to have the council have the discretion after the extension to make the final determination of the employment status. Alderman Belk. Thank you, Your Honor. So just a, a question to understand the process. Um, if that language weren't inserted, and again, this happened, and I as a particular alderman felt strongly that someone were uh, playing shenanigans with the rules and I wanted that person to be held accountable, couldn't I as an individual alderman draft a document that would say the salary and grievances committee shall take a look at this and shall vote on it, and then they would have to examine it, and then it would come back to us. So don't we de facto already have that power? That's a question, I guess, for the city attorney, sir. Um, the same result could be arrived at, but this would provide for it by ordinance so that it would happen automatically so that, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the 90-day period, somebody, a committee, is looking at it and making a determination so that you don't go another three months of examining and, it. And okay. nobody takes a look at it, and then all of a sudden somebody says, you know, are they in or out? Mm. Thank you. I, and I still think that, here we go again, you need to let the committees do their work. You need to let the committees do their work. Some may not like the composition of the present salary and grievance committee. That's not the composition that will be there next year probably or the following year. This one is pretty serious stuff. Uh, you need to let the committee, we have five standing committees. Each one is comprised of five capable, talented, dedicated, committed people that the citizens of Sheboygan elected. And they expect us, they expect me to trust their judgment like they trusted theirs. And if we don't let committees do their job, eliminate them. And then you can sit here and deal with all those issues yourself because I get the feeling the council now wants to deal with every single issue and rehash it over and over. Let the committees do their job. That's why the committees have been formed. That's why we have five different standing committees. It takes a lot of the burden off of the ones that are in that committee. Please vote this down. Alderman Rinklesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think actually, um, I'll respectfully disagree with your lecture to us. I think that the point of the language is to allow the committees to do their work. Uh, the example being if after six months the committee says it's not the person is not in compliance with the residency requirement based on the full value of looking at all the, the, the items that they can look at um, and then if if the list ordinance is actually passed then, and we do allow a 90 day extension of the requirement um, if there's no change in the actual status of those 13 things that we can look at um, there's no choice but then to pull um, that, that position away from the person that's in that position. Uh, whereas if we can actually allow the committee to come back and look at the extension of hardship, what if the house is being sold but closes two days after the 90-day extension? What if the moving van got delayed? You know, these sound like silly items, but if we're strictly relying on the automatic and then if we do vote a one-day extension, we're not giving that committee the opportunity to make better judgments, to say, okay, well, technically none of those things have changed. They're all in the process of being changed. And therefore, we'll allow this person to declare, declare residency because it's being changed. Um, uh, and, and I think that does grant um, the committee um, because while the language says common counsel, obviously that, that work would have to be done in that sovereign agreements committee um, for recommendation to the council. Uh, so. I understand, uh, Your Honor, where you're coming from in terms of letting the committee to do its work, but I think this actually makes that committee even stronger and uses, allows them to use their better judgment instead of being something that's automatic, uh, saying, nope, 90 days is done, you, you are no longer an employee here. If due diligence is being worked on, if everything is just about to be completed to be a resident here, I think it's ridiculous to not allow them to have that opportunity. Alderman Verhessel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to clarify, I guess I would have assumed by the language that was read that this would go through the normal procedures. And so this would be in collaboration with salary and grievances review, but the ultimate decision would be made by the council. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So the committee is still involved just as it normally would be. So we're not, in fact, pushing the committee out, which is a sensitive area for me as well. I think things need to work their way through committee for that finer detailed discussion. Um, but, you know, I guess the thing to remember here, too, is that there's all sort of all sorts of options available to this individual. 
or any individual put into this situation of options that are available from these 16 people who I think are pretty level-headed people. So we're not closing the door on any one issue. Uh, this can be revisited next month, as Alderman Valk alluded to. Any six, <clears throat> excuse me, any 16 of us can come in at any meeting with a document sending us in one, way, one direction or another. So we're not tied to any specific, I guess, decision tonight. Thank you. Vice President Borden. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, with all due respect, Your Honor, your comment about making, telling us how to vote on this is out of order. You can, you have, you're on a very slippery, slippery slope up there when you're making comments uh, on, an, on, a, on an issue. And I think you're out of order when you tell this council how to vote. And number two, uh, this was voted on, as I said before, was voted on and was passed by the Salary and Grievance Committee two weeks ago. Regardless if the vote is close or not, whatever is reported out of that committee should be in the minutes and it was not in the minutes. Or we wouldn't even have to go there. It would have been on the document tonight. So whether it's close or not, or whether the chairman doesn't like the outcome, it's still gotta be in the minutes. And we have Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would just like to address the missing um, minutes. At our last salary and grievance committee meeting, when we approved the minutes, which did state that Alderman Surik had indeed made that amendment of residency, Alderman Surik claimed he did not make that amendment. And what happened from that salary and grievance committee to this document coming here, I don't know. But we had this discussion at our last meeting and we all felt that it was in the minutes and Alderman Surik said he'd never made that amendment. So that's what happened. Alderman Surik. <laughs> well, all due respect to Alderman Meyer, I, I did not say that. I did make the amendment and it was voted on and it should have been placed in the minutes and it wasn't. And I brought it up at the, the following meeting saying that the minutes were, in, were not correct and I want an amendment to the minute to reflect the vote and decision, the amendment that I had made. On the amendment, please read the amendment again. Please do. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. The motion is it will be, uh, it will further be the Common Council's discretion after the extension to make a final determination of the employment status of a department head or a member of a board or commission. Please call the roll. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Sura? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Rahassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bout? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayonis? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. Woman Bourne, would you like to make the motion now? You're going to make the motion? Alderman went to my off. I was asking Alderman Bourne if he wants to make the motion to pass, put the, uh, to accept and adopt report, the ordinance as amended. Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, now under discussion, only motion as amended to uh, change the ordinance. Alderman, who's, who's up first? Alderman Wagman? Well, Mr. Mayor, we're, we're still back at point one. I still haven't gotten an answer. Is Mr. Lee an employee of the city or is he not? I would call upon the city attorney to clarify that for us. Possibly not at this meeting. I'd like to give him time to consider this. And I'd like a written opinion on it. And until such time, I would like all documents that pertain to this subject to be held. Because what we have here is a blatant violation of city ordinance. Point it's very discussion isn't on uh, Mr. Lee. The discussion is on the on the uh, resolution before us that does not mention Mr. Lee or any individual whatsoever. The yeah, point of order is uh, noted, and I concur. That's not part of the discussion, Alderman Wagaman. Thank you. On the motion to put the resolution to change the resolution as amended, now we have Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. So now this ordinance, this general ordinance having to do with residency, <coughs> means the Common Council may authorize a one-time 90-day extension. 
plus the amendment. Now the next document, which we're not talking about, certainly doesn't match that general ordinance we're putting in tonight. Comments on that, Attorney McLean? I don't know, we're just discussing the ordinance at this point. I guess the resolution is next on the agenda. Maybe, uh, I don't know if, what's going to happen with that. Well, the ordinance is the one that's been amended, just for the clarification. Next we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've been sitting quietly during this whole discussion tonight trying to form an opinion on it. Um, you know, I believe that this ordinance with the amendment gives the council the flexibility to do the right thing if we need to. Um, we, can't, we cannot be locked into a situation. I mean, there are extenuating circumstances out there in certain individual situations and lives that may cause them to go over a six-month residency requirement or a nine-month residency requirement. This gives us the flexibility to make that decision on a case-by-case -case basis as the Salary and Grievances Committee and as the council, so I'm going to support this. Thank you. Vice President Bourne. Nothing further on that, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Thank you. Alderman McNeil, one more time. Thank you, Your Honor. I simply wanted to agree with Alderman Ryan. I think in order to get to the next resolution, we have to pass this one. Thank you. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Sir? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Now we, we're back to the RC, correct? RC 191. 191. I'm sorry. 9-70. 71. We just did this ordinance, so now we're doing this one. This one here? Yep. 970, okay. RC number 191-0809 by salaries and grievances recommending granting a 90-day extension of residency requirement. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RC and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and, is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. The resolution grants a 90-day extension and has the whereas. Mr. Lee has made a satisfactory showing of hardship and it is in the city's interest to grant an extension of the six-month requirement to establish residency. Um, so I think that gives us the right to extend the residency, to give it an extension, and that I think is the purpose. I think that's what we want. We want to give an extension. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Sir. Yeah, I would, uh, <clears throat> original document, I'd like to, uh, motion to add after the word hardship that it uh, we further be at the common council's discretion after the extension to make a final determination of the employment status of a department head period. your motion has been amended accordingly under discussion on the amendment only alderman vice president born on the amendment i'll wait your honor Alderman Renfleisch, on the amendment. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think that uh, the amendment actually would uh, be moved to this point in time since the resolution uh, in front of us is being brought to us by the ordinance we just passed, which does grant 90-day extension and does grant uh, the amendment that we put in there uh, that the review, final review, would be done by the Common Council. So I don't think it's necessary to add it to this one specifically dealing with Tugerly. Um, Vice President Hanna. Thank you. Yeah. I have to agree that we've already passed the ordinance just previously, so it's in place. So this would be redundant. Mr. President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you for that comment, Alderman Hanna, but I would like to have an opinion on, from the city attorney as whether this language should also be in the resolution for this specific individual or any other individual in the future that, that the Common Council is going to make the final decision on this. Attorney uh, McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Oh, I'm born. I, I think it could, but then if it's not in there, it's not going to make any difference in my opinion. Uh, the ordinance will be in place 
That's the criteria that you will look at at the end of the 90-day extension. Uh, whether it's in Mr. Lee's specific uh, resolution granting the extension or not. I, I, if I could just follow up, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to support. I'm going to support the 90-day extension. But when it when it says in here that Mr. Lee has satisfactorily showed hardship, uh, who's he showed it to? He wasn't at the Salary and Grievance Committee two weeks ago, and Alderman Alderman uh, Surik and Alderman Verhassel asked where he was, to in his defense of why he hasn't, uh, why he's not a resident. Uh, you know, we're 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 assuming when we pass this, and I said I'm going to support it, but he has not shown hardship to either the Salary and Grievance Committee. Uh, he could have done it. He could have done it two weeks ago when he did his dog and pony show up here. He could have. He could have spent some time addressing the council on expressing his hardship for why he's not living in the city. I'm going to go along with it. But in my mind, the, the hardship has not been demonstrated because he has not been heard at the committee level, or he has not been heard by this council. Hello, Alderman. Hello, Alderman, Alderman Barn. You are out of order now. That dog and pony show is incredibly inappropriate and unprofessional, sir. The presentation was done in a very professional manner. It was done for the benefit of the council, the common council, and the community. And to refer to it in such derogatory terms, it's, I'm surprised by you. You're out of order. Alderman Gisha. Now I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. Uh, some information was passed uh, to that salary and grievance committee. I was in attendance. I believe one home has sold in the entire city of Waukesha in the first four months of 2008. I mean, there are some, I don't want to get into the nitpicking of an individual because I don't think that's appropriate for this body to, to do that. But to not recognize the economic issues of selling a home these days is, uh, is remarkable. You have to recognize the reality. What says on, on paper is one thing, but reality is something else. And, one home being sold in four months in the city of Waukesha, where that's where that home was listed. If that isn't a hardship, I don't, I don't really know what it is. There was another, a lot of other items mentioned. Although Mr. Lee was not in attendance, data was presented on his behalf. Next we have, oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Wagaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The real estate market, to my knowledge, hasn't changed in the last seven or eight months or maybe a year. I think Mr. Lee knew when he got hired how difficult this was going to be. And we've had other city department heads who've come to the city who've made great effort to move here. In fact, several of them ended up making two house payments, but they moved here, they complied. So how can we grant him an extension when these people went to no end to comply? How can we tell any of our employees that they must abide by the ordinances if we can make ordinances to benefit just one person? The real estate market hasn't changed. It's been difficult. I appreciate that. But he should have known that. You should have plan B in place. He can come to Sheboygan and rent an apartment, rent his house out. There's a million things he could do. But this market hasn't changed for many, many, many months. And I'm, and I'm sure he very well knew this when he took the job. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Uh, respectfully, the real estate market has changed dramatically. Uh, anybody who doesn't think the real estate market hasn't changed, uh, I, I think maybe there, there's some other data that they can receive. Um, the, anybody trying to sell a home uh, is having difficulty, which is hardship by definition, I think, for a lot of families. And I think a lot of families are having a hard time with that in our community and in other communities. And as far as changing ordinances, we change ordinances all the time. Uh, fences being removed, pool setbacks, sidewalks, corner uh, lots. We change ordinances all the time and go to various committees and have ordinance changes all the time. It is not a, and waivers given, it's not a spectacular event. I wish we did it less, but we don't. It's not an unusual situation. And frankly, if I was a department head coming to any city given a six month trial period, because that's how department heads come in. They come in with a six month we're going to check you out, and if you pass the test after six months, you're hired permanently and offered a five-year contract. I wouldn't sell my house in the first six months. What if after six months, the city of Sheboygan and this group says, hey, I don't, I don't want you, and I've already moved my whole family and, and the neighbors and everybody, right, as the ordinance states, on through. Uh, 
so I've already moved everything here, and after six months, the, the council or a committee decides they don't want me. So I think perhaps the six-month rule at some point might need to be looked at because it's a little bit, boy, it's a scary deal to roll those dice on a six-month <laughs> trial period. Thank you. Uh, I would ask the gallery to please refrain from uh, unnecessary comments and noises. This is a, uh, a good discussion. <coughs> People um, have strong feelings about the issue. Uh, I'm not spared. I have strong feelings about that. Quite frankly, I agree with Alderman Gisha's uh, analysis that I don't think I would want to try to sell my house in the first six months if I'm on probation. Uh, it makes sense that the six month clock start ticking after you're approved for permanent uh, secured employment. Uh, it's a good, hearty discussion. People have strong feelings. Let's just maintain our composure and respect for each other. Next we have Rinfleisch, Elman Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree, it is definitely a hot button issue. And uh, I think uh, we're, we're, for the most part, keeping our composure here. And I get, grant people the, the um, you know, thanks for, for everybody that, uh, you know, we keep it to the facts and keep it to the information at hand. Um, however, this is exactly why I felt it was important that we pass the um, previous um, uh, general ordinance with the uh, amendment to it, is that it does give this body uh, and the committees time to look at each individual situation uh, instead of automatically acting uh, on this one. Uh, but also, uh, again, I think we're really focusing on one particular issue uh, in re resolution number 810809, uh, regarding Tugger Lee, and that would be the sale of his house. The sale of property or the house he, uh, he lives in would be may, perhaps one of the many issues we can look at. Um, and um, if the house isn't necessarily sold, there are still options that, that people have for um, residency. Uh, what does the driver's license say? Where do they live? Are they renting? Are the kids going to school in the area here? These are other things that we can also look at, not just sale of the property. Uh, it seems to me that if, if Mr. Lee is commuting and spending a fortune in fuel costs, because fuel has also gone up substantially while the real estate market has cooled off, uh, that there may be other options with living within the city uh, for that person. Uh, and I would like to see, have that opportunity for him to look at some other options if the house is selling and if he's still within his six months trial periods per se. I think there are other ways we, this, this council can look at. So I'd be definitely in favor of granting the extension past the 90 days uh, so we can reach some kind of agreement so that we can keep him and the product, the work that he's doing and the products that are, are moving forward, uh, but also meet with the guidelines of, of residency. Which of the other uh, guidelines can we look at besides just simply the sale of his house and the purchase of a house here can we use? Um, so I think continue the conversation, continue discussions within this uh, council, but uh, ultimately let's grant uh, this, this resolution's grant the extension uh, and work with Tugger Lee to find out how we can have him become a resident here. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Boak. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think that of all of us, there's one person that's been consistently right on this issue, and that's Alder Person Gisha, who has said time and time again, every time we get into this, it just gets deeper and deeper and murkier and murkier. So with that, uh, Your Honor, I'd call the question. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and second to call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Please call the roll. Yes. Rinfleisch? Yes, sir. Clarify. Oh. Um, sir, could you please read what you Okay. Uh, the, uh, the motion is to add after uh, September 19, 2008. Uh, it will be further be at the Common Council's discretion after the extension to make a final determination of the employment status of a department head, period. Please. On the amendment. Rinfleisch? Excuse me? No. No. Ryan? No. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Rehassel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warren? Aye. Boat? No. Decker? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clionis? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Five ayes, 11 no's. Motion fails. Please call the roll on uh, accepting and adopting 191 Do we have a motion as amended? The first motion was done by Montemayor Gish. Does that still stand? Is that all right? Yeah. 
Oh, excuse me. Alman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. This particular resolution was, was, was created by Boren, Heidemann, Zurich, and Verhassel. So I don't want to make that motion because I, no, no, not me. No, the motion's already been made, so. Oh, oh you're withdrawing your motion. Well, okay. Yours is on the first. Now we just need someone to make a final motion if you don't want to. No. Okay. So, so she's withdrawing her motion, okay. Vice President. Okay, hold on. We have no motion. Is there anybody who's going to make a motion? Yeah. Move and second. Okay, motion and second. Under discussion. Now we have uh, Vice President Boren. Well, I want to. I want not on, not on the motion. I, I if I, if I could, I would like to apologize to you, Mayor, and the Common Council, and the citizens for my previous comment. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any other comments? Okay, please call the roll. Pretty clear on what we're voting on? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I have all these looks. We're, we're voting on the RC191 with the attached Res 81, granting a 90 day extension of residency requirement with no amendments. Accept and adopt. Accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Okay? Okay, Ryan. Aye. Surat. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 964, General Orders number 40809 by Owen Boren, Wagaman, Heidemann, Zurich, and Vanderweel, repealing and recreating certain provisions of the municipal code so as to expand and clarify the definition of a nuisance, expand the scope of the ordinance, provide procedures for abatement, deal with chronic nuisances, and update the nuisance noise ordinance dealing with radios and phonographs. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I move that the uh, general ordinance be put upon its passage. Mo motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, the Law and Licensing Committee at the request of Officer Todd Preby of the Sheboygan Police Department, and with the help of uh, uh, Deputy City Attorney uh, Charles Adams, created this new ordinance that will make it easier for the police department, our new code enforcer, and the building inspection uh, department to enforce violations and help with uh, our Clean City Initiative. Okay. All about. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in my 15 months on the council, I've been working consistently with Officer Preby on things just like that are covered in here, and I can't thank uh, Law and Licensing and the Chairman and Officer Preby and Attorney Adams uh, enough for finally getting uh, a, a, something in black and white that will help us hold absent landlords and landlords who tolerate just abominable behavior, repeated abominable behavior from their tenants, and it's brought to their attention they do nothing. I get phone calls, constituents in tears who fear for their safety at night, drunkards next door, violence next door. So thank you, uh, Chairman Boren, for getting this done, and I look forward to voting yes on this document. Okay. Hey, oh, President Hanna. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I concur with Alderman uh, Bauck's opinion. This is uh, long overdue. Um, real glad that uh, Officer Preby's involved and, and helping us uh, make a priority about some of these issues, so thank you. Thank you. And Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a point of clarification, under section 66-107, enforcement. Uh, for the purposes of this chapter, officer shall mean any peace officer, including a police officer, fire inspector, building inspector, or housing inspector. Um, the assumption being that the code enforcer is under the building inspector, or do we need to add that person specifically as, as enforcement under the uh, the section. Code enforcer is already under that bill inspection. It's under building inspection. Sure, sure. That's right. Just throw the clarification. Thank you. Okay. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Sir. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 965, General Ordinance Number 410809, Alderman Hanna, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Heilman, and Kittleson, relating to the direction of traffic so as to add a no left turn 
zone for southbound traffic on uh, STH 42 Calumet Drive at Merton's Avenue. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. For Hassel, Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clyunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Surik, Aye. and Vanderweel. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 967, General Ordinance Number 430809, by Alderman Hannah, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Heideman, and Kittleson relating to no, park, no parking zone so as to add a 15 minute parking zone along the north zone of Niagara Avenue from 40 feet to 85 feet west of the west curb line of North 7th Street. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Okay. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Heidemann, Kittleson, Clyunis, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Surik, Vanderweel, Aye. and Verhassel. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. <clears throat> 1045 is a communication from Joanne Krause stating her concern regarding the drop off procedure at South High School and many South, South Side commuters as it is chaos at the intersection of South 12th Street and Washington Avenue before and after school. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1046 is a communication from Jerry Driscoll requesting that Sheboygan rethink the speed limits on main roads through town, stating that 30 to 35 is not too fast on some of the roads, but 25 miles per hour from the north to the south end is not a reasonable speed, and also stating that there should be some yield or stop signs where Broughton Drive ends at a five-way intersection. That will go to public protection and safety also. 1047 is a communication from Asher Heimerman requesting that the 2009 traffic routes and restrictions be reviewed and improved during the July 4th events. That will go to public protection and safety. 1048 is a communication from Tujer Lee, Director of IT, requesting authorization to release an RFP for the purpose of soliciting bids for a time and attendance system. That will go to finance. 1049 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the consulting agreement between Humana, Inc. and the City of Sheboygan. That lies over. 1050 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the access agreement Virgin Health Miles program between Humana Insurance Company and the City of Sheboygan. That lies over. 1051 is an ordinance creating section 118-10 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to permit and regulate neighborhood electric vehicles in the city of Sheboygan. That will go to public protection and safety. 1052 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008, June 30, 2009, and June 30, 2010. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1053 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a petition for the vacation of a portion of North 21st Street located in Sheboygan, lying between North Avenue and Calumet Drive, thereof signed by the owners of all the lots and lands abutting that portion sought to be vacated, and the owners of more than one-third of that portion of the remainder thereof lying within 2,650 feet of the ends of the portion sought to be discontinued. That will be going to City Planning Commission. 1054 is a resolution ordering a hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of North 21st Street located in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, a line between North Avenue and Calumet Drive. And that lies over. 1055 is an ordinance for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of North 21st Street located in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, a line between North Avenue and Calumet Drive. I will refer that to city planning. I need a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.